There are over 7.6 billion people in the world. Each individual, including identical twins, has their own fingerprint. Just like every human being has their own unique story, whether it is short or long. Here's a story that has never been told about an individual that can never be duplicated, a soldier that refuses to fail their mission. Let me properly introduce myself. My name is Rachel J.L., born in Las Vegas, Nevada, November 11th, 89. I am one out of nine siblings. I am the middle child. Today is April, um, whatever day it is, and we're here at Coachella 2014 with Charles Wrangle. Sup, sup. And uh, we're about to sneak in. So we just got through parking and finally got into the camping grounds. Our next major step was getting past the main security gate without a wristband. Excuse me, sir, you just got caught sneaking into Coachella. How do you feel? How do you feel, sir? I'm not gonna lie. Day one was an epic fail. I know what I want and I'm not leaving without it. We went back the next day and made history. Oh my God, we just freaking snuck into Coachella, dude. This is freaking sick. <laughs> My Coachella experience inspired me to push harder and always fight for what you want, no matter how hard it may seem, and know that nothing is impossible. Here and there, I do get discouraged and depressed. Sometimes there is no one to tell you not to jump. I have to talk to myself and say, Rachel, you're better than that. Replace that negative thought with something you like or something to make you laugh. I then build enough strength, pick myself up, and keep moving. Yeah, I sleep in my car. It is so hot, sometimes I have to sleep with the AC on. I look for locations with shade. Parking garages are my main focus, but in 100 degree weather, it doesn't really make a difference. I really want my company camera and equipment, so every dime counts. As a young woman, it's harder to take care of myself this way and it needs to change soon. Sometimes I can no longer bear the pain and the heat and I have to make a sacrifice. I wanna sleep in a real bed and get some real rest. I used to get major depression, the feeling that no one loves you, no one cares about you, and you're hated. I began hating myself. I turned into an alcoholic, self-mutilator, became addicted to narcotics and other pills. I cried myself to sleep a lot, hoping I would not awake. I used to be this way and think that way. Now I can stand proud and say I overcame all of the above. No rehab, just the power of the human brain and the help of God. One day, I stared at myself in the mirror and said, you are beautiful, you are kind, you are loved, and always know that. I learned you have to love yourself first before you can love anyone else. I know I have potential to be something great, so I put it all away 
and never turned back. I just want to get off the streets. <laughs> I just want to live a better life. I learned to keep looking at what you want. Keep a mental picture in your head. I keep a small classic vintage camera around my neck. It's my motivation. Reminding me if I keep fighting, I'm going to eventually get it. I got a membership at 24 Hour Fitness just to be able to take a decent shower. I have the hotel today, but going to the gym is now part of my schedule. My parents just moved into town from Washington, D.C., and they brought my son. I'm going to go visit. This is my son, Iskar. I had him since he was born. My parents were kind enough to take care of him until I can get my own place. Soon, I'm going to give him a good home. I love him. He deserves a good home. I get my energy from my dad. He keeps me alive. He's the best dad ever. I'll see you in the future, okay? Bye. Bye. Mom needed to take a break from packing. So she came to a hotel so she can get a little rest. So you lose weight. Oh, yeah. I don't want you to sleep in your car. Look at this little place. I love her dearly. She's the best thing that's ever happened to me. <laughs> Wait, Jim. Oh, I need to see more of you. I know, Mama. I'll see you later. <laughs> love you, Jim. Love you, Mama. Thanks for coming back. Part of my fight is for them both. They took care of me. It's time to take care of them. I can't stay with them for so many reasons, but they help me as much as I allow them. They know my independence and pride is strong, and they know this will be over soon. Most days I like to come to a music store and practice drum set. It's a little different teaching yourself, but I'll get it. I spend a lot of time in my car, just driving. Most of the time stalling, looking for something to do until that time to go drumming. One day, I'll get chauffeured around, so I'm not worried about it. I try to get here about an hour before I drum because the unpacking process is very timely. This process takes a lot of energy. There's a lot of bending, lifting, and overthinking. I have a small dolly, which I do need to invest in a bigger one, but if everything is not strapped on a certain way, it will collapse, and I would have to start over again. Having to walk a long distance, it starts to get a little heavy, but it'll be worth it in the end. I'm not gonna lie, it is a really long walk, but I try to walk fast to speed up the process. While I am taking the walk, a lot of times I'm thinking about progressing to the next level. I love street performing for so many reasons, but I know it's time to go. There's a reason why you rarely see female street drummers. It's a little hard on the body, especially when you do this every day. You have your negatives, but light always overcomes darkness. You have to come at a decent time if you want to get a good spot. The spot definitely depends on how much you make a day. Today is gonna to be a slow day, but every dime counts. So I'm gonna put in at least eight hours and I'll know I'll leave with something. I try to make sure the sounds are different before I set up or I'll have to take it apart because the sounds are off. I have to make sure I have lots of duct tape. 
It helps alter sounds, it put things back together, and it preserves. I have to set this up a certain way or it will not work. It will fall apart as soon as I beat on it. I use straps by colors so I know what to use first and what to use last. Orange, yellow, blue, green. I use a sign to tell people what I'm doing. I don't know any fundamentals yet, so I don't sound too good acoustically. So I just cover songs I think people like. But of course, I like all the songs. I'm very versatile with music. I just play off my head and everything just comes out naturally. I play song after song. A lot of times I don't take a break. Sometimes people stop me to hand me water or Gatorades because they see. I thank God for those people. I love being around people. I love knowing when people stop to dance, just watch or even donate, me being there change the course by minutes, seconds, or hours. Of course, I love being tipped, but a lot of times I'm so into playing, I forget. Drumming gives me a huge release, and most of the time, people are sending me good energy, so then I really get zoned out. A lot of times my hands ache, and sometimes even bleed from cuts and busted blisters. I tried gloves, but they don't even help. It does prevent certain things, I guess, but they make my sticks slip out of my hands, so I don't use them. I use band-aids instead. Sad to say, I don't think a guy would ever want to hold these hands. I don't blame them, though. I love when I'm counting and I find little notes from the people. It keeps me pumped knowing there's people out there that really care and believe what I'm fighting for. I'll call them my angels. I don't get notes all the time, so when I do, it's like a surprise, so I'm always super excited. I love foreign change because it's really cool knowing that I'm international. Knowing people from Korea, Australia, Japan, China, London, Paris, Canada, Germany, these people were watching. The packing up process takes time by itself. I have to do the same thing I did to get here. And I'm already tired, so it takes longer every time. I love drumming in Vegas because people are crazy and they're just out here to have a good time. A lot of times right after I'm done drumming on Fridays, I hit the road to California. I try to go to Cali every Saturday and Sunday. With no sleep most of the time, my adrenaline keeps me awake. I love Cali so much and when I sleep in my car here, I get better rest most of the time because it's not so hot. It's paradise. The drive takes about four and a half hours. It gives me time to think, meditate, and talk to God. And that's really the only time I can listen to my classical music. I started playing violin in sixth grade and uh, continued for a few years after that, about three years. And I've uh, just been in love with classical music. And it always gives me ideas for movies. As I'm listening to the music, 
I'm literally watching a movie in my head. When performing on Venice Beach, you have to come early to get a performing spot. Most times, I'm in a spot at 6 a.m. There's a cool guy that lives here that helps me as much as he can. I just sit here waiting, just waiting for it to get busy. So finally, when it gets busy, I start performing. I love performing in Cali because it's a different atmosphere than Vegas. 98% of the time, the weather is nice, the crowds are different, and there are no real rules for performing that affect me. I love Venice Beach. The beach relaxes my soul every time. Really quick, let me take you back in time where it all began. It started with three of us. Then, it was just me and my big brother. We performed in the strip with a pretty cool show. Started some serious parties. We soon got news in a place called Fremont Street Experience. So, we decided to change locations. The only bad thing was their strange rules. Each individual has to be in a two by two feet radius and you couldn't leave the spot. The head of security hated us from the first day he met us. And he was gonna do anything to kick us off for good. We soon began performing with the Williams Brothers that gave us more feet to perform and a new show for our audience. One day, my brother got into trouble and that left me all alone. I was too afraid to drum alone. When I did build up enough courage to drum alone on Fremont Street, I was harassed and arrested a lot for performing. The head of security got the courts to exile me for the rest of my life. I am never allowed to play drums on Fremont Street ever again. After losing my job, I lost everything in the same month. I lost my car, and I was evicted from my apartment. So I had to move to Washington, D.C. to live with my parents and work as a waitress in a steakhouse restaurant. I couldn't handle that at all. So I sold my camera and all the equipment I invested in for years just to move back and start over. I've done some pretty crazy stunts in my life. When I went cliff jumping for the first time, I barely hesitated. I just jumped. I got a rib tattoo, but the craziest stunt I've ever done in my life was selling my camera. So that left me with a new mission. Drumming is my living. It's hard to pay bills and save up for a $4,000 camera and over $2,000 worth of equipment. I was recently arrested for street performing and issued a few citations. So now I have to raise enough money for a lawyer as well to fight for this case. I'm still gonna get the camera one day though. They always put something major just so it would go through court and not get dropped. I'm not gonna lie. I am a little nervous to perform sometimes because I don't want to go to jail for no reason, but I still perform knowing it could happen. I'm not ever giving up and they will never stop me from exercising my civil right to drum in the streets. I'm going to keep fighting and I'm not going to let them scare me away. One day I will make it to Hollywood 
I will be one of the best film directors of our time. I will own a house on a hill with my own family and I will be successful. There are so many other performers out here and around the world fighting and performing for different reasons. One out of every hundred people in the world are dream chasers. Dream chasers know what they want and will die fighting for it, just like a soldier. I found another one. He won't be on the streets long, I guarantee it. In my 24 years living, I learned a few things so far. Never drive behind a bus, never get big portions at Whole Foods, never mix alcohol with prescription medications. Always respect authority, even if they're in the wrong sometime. Always love your neighbor as yourself. Love the life you live. Love creates happiness, and happiness is the secret to living a long life. Everything we do is a moment. Cherish every moment because once it's gone, it's never coming back. There is no color, only one race, which is the human race. Don't complain. Remember, there's always someone worse off than you. Just be thankful for what you have. Don't do things to please people. Do it because you like it. Life is not a game. We only have one, so live it to your greatest potential and never give up on anything you do. I will never give up on my dream. I will fight till the day I die. My number one goal is to get enough support so I can get off the streets, start my own film company, and make movies and music videos for the rest of my life. At the end of the day, it's all about who you know. With the proper help and support, I won't be here long. My name is Rachel JL, and I, I'm a dream chaser.